I love the evening. Things quiet down as it slowly gets dark. Years ago, when I was still in my corporate job, I often was either working at night, thinking about work projects, or at the very least keeping my Blackberry close to check incoming emails and reply to them. As a result, I had a hard time falling asleep, often lying awake in bed for at least an hour before finally dozing off. Because of that experience, I am now a lot more intentional about how I spend my evenings. Due to the pandemic, I've been spending less time with groups of people. But as an introvert, I kind of need a good chunk of me time anyway. So when I'm home alone, this is one of my typical evening routines. I like to stop working around 5 p.m. I don't have a separate office. My desk is in my living room. It's not ideal, but what I can do is clean and organize my desk for the next day. Then I change into shorts, put on my sneakers and start a cardio session. With the gyms being closed on and off last year, I've started to do workouts at home. I actually made a video about a 30 day yoga challenge I did, which I will link to in the top right corner. But today I'm doing a cardio session. I really like the team body project workouts, especially the words of encouragement and motivation that Daniel, one of the instructors, gives at the end. After I've completed the workout, I do a bit of stretching, jump into the shower and change into a fresh pair of clothes. I love to cook. I find it very relaxing, a great way to get out of my head and just mess about. I put on some lo-fi music to unwind after a busy day. Tonight I'm having a simple pasta dish. First I cut some sun-dried tomatoes and then chicken. After adding spices, I let the chicken marinate for a bit. In the meantime, I toast a handful of pine nuts in a dry skillet. When they're done, I pour oil in the pan. When the oil is hot, I lower the heat and add the sun-dried tomatoes. I put on water for the pasta and add the chicken to the tomatoes. The water is boiling and I decide it's gonna be spaghetti tonight. I cut up some parsley for later and add two spoons of pesto alla calabrese to the chicken. To make it a bit creamier, I like to add a bit of pasta water. At the end, I add the spaghetti, some grated parmesan cheese and the parsley and give it a quick stir. After sprinkling the toasted pine nuts over it, dinner is ready. As part of my intention to slow down and be more present, I decide to not do anything else during my meal. This way, I can really focus my attention on how the meal tastes, and it also helps in not eating too fast. I really like how this recipe turned out. I'm definitely adding it to my list of favorites. After dinner, I immediately do the dishes, so I don't have to think about it later at night. It's one of those nights where it's a bit chilly. It's been gray and rainy all day. So I'm making a pot of herbal tea. Lately, I've really gotten into chamomile. Not only does it taste good, but it has a calming effect on the body, just what I'm looking for at night. I never watch TV because I don't have one. This is a conscious decision. I want to be more intentional about what I watch. I do love a good bingeable Netflix or HBO show, but in order to watch it, I have to open my laptop again, which is something I'd rather not do every night. What I like to do instead is picking up my guitar and jamming for a bit.
This year, I've started reading books again. For a while, I found it quite difficult to focus on it because I had such a racing mind during the day and I couldn't just flip a switch and turn it off. But that has improved after I started slowing down my life intentionally. And although I've read a lot of non-fiction books over the years, mostly self-help, I am now reading a good chunk of fiction. George R. R. Martin once said, A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. With all the travel restrictions in place, I feel at times like I'm living a real-life version of the movie Groundhog Day. Reading books is a way to use my imagination to travel to other destinations from the comfort of my couch and live those other lives. Another quote about reading I really like is by Mallory Blackman. Reading is an exercise in empathy, an exercise in walking in someone else's shoes for a while. I'd say this depends a bit on the book, but I find this to be very true for the novel I'm reading now, which is Clara and the Sun by Katsuo Ichiguro. The story is set in the near future, where technology has rendered many people post-employed and created a blunt caste system where the so-called lifted are on top. The narrator is Clara, an artificial friend to Josie, a sick homeschool child. Without giving away the plot, it's really interesting to observe humans through Clara's eyes. The book asks questions like, what makes a sentient being? And it also calls to question our own limited human understanding of the world. Around 10.30 p.m. I decide to head to bed. I clean everything up, brush my teeth, and just quickly tidy up the place. That way, when I walk into the living room in the morning, it looks welcoming, ready for me to start the day. I don't often read in bed. Instead, I prefer to listen to a podcast. Sometimes I even go to bed early to make more time for it. With a podcast, I can close my eyes and relax. Similar to the books I read at night, I prefer to not listen to any business or self-help podcast before going to sleep. I'd rather listen to something that broadens my horizon and it has nothing to do with work. I especially love investigative journalism and storytelling podcasts. Some of my favorite podcasts are This American Life, 99% Invisible and Ear Hustle. Tonight I'm listening to an episode of 99% Invisible about a real book. Created in the mid-1970s by a few college students, the real book contained sheet music for hundreds of jazz standards. However, this was an unlicensed publication, you couldn't just buy it in a store. It was duplicated at photocopy shops and sold on street corners, out of the trunks of cars and under the table at music stores, where people used secret code words to make the exchange. The podcast episode tells the story of how the real book became the bootleg bible of jazz. I will link to the episode in the description, it's really interesting. I usually stop listening to the podcast when the episode is over, or when I notice I'm getting really sleepy. Then I'll turn it off and generally fall asleep pretty quickly after that. Not every night looks like this, but these are some calming practices that help me to slow down and prepare for the much needed rest ahead. Thanks for spending your evening with me, I will see you in the next video.